presenting what we've been doing up till now. Uh, we are a team of more than three people. As you've seen, there's been four here total so far. The game we've been working on was uh, Planet Toy Pioneers. As you saw, the original inspiration for it came from our artist, um, whom I've been working with for um, a bunch of years now, eight, nine years, uh, on Cortex Command, the previous game. He keeps doing these very inspirational uh, kind of deconstructions of, of older games. So there's Excite Bike in here, there's Metroid, there's Bionic Commando, and Tribes kind of elements, and he just makes these uh, very tantalizing uh, concept art things just for fun, and his website is Shockability, so I would recommend you go check it out. It's AndroidArts.com. I saw this, and I think there's this there's a signature somewhere here, and it's 07. I saw it then, and then I started like thinking I need to make a game like this because this is amazing. We started talking him and I about kind of making a sequel to Cortex Command, based on that kind of perspective, and we this is the result of that. This is in 2012, I believe. But at this point, we've already started working on an engine, and I had met Miro, I don't know when, which year was it? It was about six years ago. This is a lot to read, obviously, but these are kind of the game inspirations. Metal Slug, Exile, Metroid, and Solar Jetman. If you haven't seen Exile, it, there's a couple of game, uh, games named that, but there's a specific one that was released in 88 BBC on BBC Micro, on the, the C64, and on the Amiga, and it's amazing. Just look it up, it's a side-scrolling, you'll see which one it is because it's the side-scrolling little, little dude running around in a very Metroid kind of, you're alone uh, on a planet and there's aliens and stuff. Um, far ahead of its time. Yeah, super far ahead of its time. That had a physics engine in it that, you know, in a Commodore 64 was no, or BBC Micro for that matter, no uh, mean feat. Spy vs. Spy uh, is a classic on the Commodore 64 as well where you're collecting pieces to build a ship to get off a Get off an island, or or there were two versions, or two sequels three. of it, huh? Three. There were three of them. Okay. Cool. I was I only played the first two, but um, Mule is another classic for the Commodore sixty four, Excite Bike, and so on. We wanted to have like those physics based things in there. So uh, the Crush Two D physics engine was originally called the Cave Vehicle Engine because we had no uh, imagination. The uh, physics solver in it is is world class because we looked at all the different two D physics solvers out there and. Uh, Box 2D is probably the best one, um, and it's been used by everyone for eight years. So we um, we looked at that though, and it didn't do some things that we wanted, uh, like dynamic destruction and arbitrary shapes and so on. And uh, Miro, who's a goddamn hero, kind of uh, <laughs> wrote, which which is his new slogan as of now, um, wrote a new physics engine that that does all that and does it just about as fast as, if not faster. We haven't done like head-to-head -head benchmarking, but it, it handles stuff super fast and it's really good. We have advanced hoarding systems and lighting and uh, editors for everything and it's all live edited, so it's very Unity-like in that way. You update a texture in Photoshop, save it, and then before you even all tab back into the, the editor, it's already updated in the game, so it's running and you can iterate super fast. It's got Lua scripting and stuff, so um, this is kind of the setup before, you know, we had all this when we came to Studio, so uh, go to next, please. And by the way, this will be available for use for freeware, for free, and for educational stuff, or you can license it for commercial projects also. So we're kind of eating our own dog food in a sense uh, by building a game, a legitimate game with this engine, but we hope other people will want to use it as well because we're porting it. In, I forgot to mention we're porting this to mobile, iOS, Android, and uh, um, it, it's already running on, on Linux and, and uh, Mac and so on. So. This is uh, Nicholas, who was here for the first week uh, that I was here, which was the second week of, or the third week of this student project this year. Uh, he started off by sketching things on paper, physical paper, so you might have seen him, you know, mm -hmm. sitting around uh, in the grass uh, doing his thing, and basically just magic comes out of his head, uh, and it's, it's this stuff. So we uh, got a lot of assets um, uh, made uh, by him when he was here. These are some examples of it, so this is the way, they don't actually have to lay in such an organized manner, the engine, you can just click on the different pieces that you want to use, but you know, he organizes things nicely here, so there's a lot of Cortex Command throwbacks here, you know, these are characters and, and uh, things that, that Cortex Command players would recognize. He has a very kind of a structured way of, of thinking about uh, creating assets. These are all things that live on the surface of this planet, first planet that you visit. It has a very strong sun, basically, so um, anything that's not like silver covered would burn up, including yourself. 
so if you don't take shelter in a cave very soon after you crash land on there, you will literally catch fire. So some sketches that he's already made, um, I've started putting into the game. You can rough out in the editor, kind of like put that in the background uh, as a layer, and then I just put these macaroni pieces, we call them, and do a rough outline of that design, and then we toss that stuff in the background away and, and flush it out more. And I live streamed this, so or dev streamed it, or whatever Twitch thing the other day, so uh, that's a good way to, as you know, engage your uh, community and uh, get people interested in what you're doing and show one, them what you're doing. Uh, and in our case, it's even more important because we're showing the editor as well, the engine, how easy it is to work with. It's really fun, actually. So. One awesome tip what Dan discovered while streaming is it keeps you super focused. Oh, yeah. Because you know people are watching, yeah. so you're not going to look at So anyone who's done that, totally. Yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like a good, a good exercise that I want to take. I'm totally well. ADD, so like for me yeah. it's hard to focus on anything, you know, like go oh, butterfly, so that, but when I know that about, you know, like half a dozen or whatever it was the other yeah. day, uh, we didn't announce it very well, so, you know, some people trickled in, but it, it there's enough that one person is looking over your shoulder, you're, you're going to stay on task a lot better, uh, yeah. so... Okay, Miro is, we've talked about, and he's been just cranking out uh, incredible code since uh, he got here. You know, I um, worked with him for six years, but never actually met him until he came to Studio, which is a very cool thing for us to be able to do here. Uh, it's an opportunity, you know, he lives in Slovakia, I live in the US. We had literally never met, even though we work together daily. So it was awesome to meet him, and uh, we've had a lot of fun in two weeks now. He brought some good Slovakian a booze and uh, enjoy that as well. Um, but as you can see, he's he's just churning through the um, our Trello stuff. And if you guys are, are not familiar with Trello, uh, we switched to it not too long ago, and it's been brilliant. It's amazing for anything from game development to like fixing up your house or a car or for any project. This will organize that shit for you. So Vlad has been uh, doing a bunch of different stuff. He he is our kind of biz dev guy, PR person, which is somewhat of a dirty word, but. It's a very, very important thing, an important role. Cortex Command, when I released it, I made it myself, and I kind of released it on my own. I was super naive about how to actually go about doing that. I had met some, some uh, press people, you know, at GDC and so on, I had like a personal relationship with them, but I would like email them the day I was releasing something, like, hey, it would be cool if you mentioned this or something. And it was like, not at all a, a camp. The campaign would be a very, very, uh, like I didn't do anything like that. So I was dumb about it, and I think the sales of the game suffered and so on, obviously, and the expo exposure that I got. Vlad has been here for a month now, plus, uh, cranking out not only, um, well, I mean, there's been a steady stream of emails going out from him to not only press people, but also YouTubers and streamers, and he, before he did that, he looked at all the YouTubers in the entire, you know, YouTube universe that might be remotely interested in the type of game we're making. So. Uh, that is very grueling and, and not a fun task. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's kind of a hero for doing that. Um, and uh, it's resulted in, in a lot of YouTubers agreeing to meet with us at Gamescom and PAX and so on. So we have confirmed meetings with all these guys and we're going to give them VIP treatment. And it's really what it's about, is, is, um, as far as I can tell, uh, is, is creating relationships with these guys who... Especially not, you know, the not necessarily the biggest guys. I mean, it's awesome if they do stuff for you because then, you know, PewDiePie has 26 whatever million um, viewers and that's awesome. But the, the guys who are kind of up and coming, those are the ones you want to grow with, you know. So you want to create a relationship with them that is genuine, not a bunch of, you know, mass produced emails, but actually. So that's the other thing he was digging, not only in, in the present moment, but he looked at in the past, like what have people been interested in before? I mean, we had a game from before, but you can, if you're making your first game, you can look at what other games are similar to yours and see which YouTubers were into those games at the time and see where they've grown now. You know, if, if you can kind of relate to them on that level, then um, it's huge. So he's also been cranking out stuff for, for um, our expo tour that we're going to be doing. Uh, we're, we're releasing on Early Access in uh, mid-September. So it's a big, as for us, you know, big campaign. We're going to pretty much every expo we know of, every conference we know of. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that. So hit the next. Yeah. So part of that is making as much swag as we can. I mean, we didn't really make a ton of stuff. Honestly, we made this keychain, which is gonna be kick ass. Um, it's made of little vinyl stickers that actually stuck together and end up being you know two sided thing. Uh, it's a very simple, small thing. We're making a thousand of these. They're not super expensive. 
but they're durable and it's something that I, I know I thought to myself like I could actually use that. I would actually use that in my real life. You know, if you make something that people just throw away, like what's the point, honestly? And there's no actual branding on this. It's just something that you know people might ask like, what is that thing? What it looks like a something dummy thing, and then they'll have a conversation about, oh, this is game, you know, and then it's more organic that way, you know, instead of having just a logo, why would you want to put someone's logo on your machine or car or whatever. Uh, we made a banner, you know, so we're going to be using that. Um, that. That one's in the U.S. We have one being made here as well in the Europe. In Europe, in the Europe. Um, we're going to be obviously using those. They're, they're about you know, this high. Two meter high. Yeah, yeah uh, this wide. These are cards uh, on the reverse of this. These are small cards, like almost a little larger business than a business card. Size. Kind of like it collect collectible cards. I would yeah. say like yeah. um, Magic the Gathering size card. On the reverse of this, there's a free key for a uh, Steam key for Cortex Command, our last game. You know, it's been out for a bunch of years now already. Three so years. yeah, on Steam. on Steam three years. So there's a Steam key on there. So it's a it's a twenty dollar value that you're just handing someone. You know, and there's no shenanigans. Like there's no like sign up and get added to our, there is a sign up thing here, but we are actually giving them the key on the other side. So we're going to give those to people who seem particularly into our stuff at these conferences. So this is our, our tour and it's, it's hectic, uh, as you can see, and, and Vlad's going to be going to most of these. I am going to a bunch of, yeah, you're going to all of these, but I'm going to games, common packs, and pretty much the rest of this is you. The, the jam we went through last weekend was, was kind of an example of us just getting out there and uh, doing something uh, interesting and, and different. I mean, that was kind of a last minute planning thing as well. We drove down there, we, we were thinking of just doing train, you know, train ride, but we had uh, availability of a car, which made it easier in a lot of ways. Um, we got an Airbnb in Malmö, really close to this venue. Uh, Norman, Sweden is a really cool jam, if you guys ever go. It has a heritage in the indie scene here in Sweden. Escape from Norman, Sweden is our game. Uh, it's kind of a human pachinko. Uh, machine. Uh, there's these little rag dolls in here that are all people from from the jam. Uh, I went around with my camera and just took pictures of people's faces and we threw them in the game. So everything here is photo based. As you see, these are just like pieces of textures, you know, from the venue, just hastily thrown together, as jams kind of require you to do. Uh, and then you tilt the whole the whole world. So the gravity is what you're tilting, and you're moving these guys down here, and they fall in a funny. Way. Our goal was to create something that we could show to also mobile platform uh, owners and, and whatnot that we can actually use this engine on a mobile kind of way. So imagine that in the end we'll hopefully try to you know get it's like an accelerometer. You can imagine you yeah. know, tilting. It's like um, a yet it, and yet it moves uh, with the game. Yeah. Um, that. Come on, it? come on. Yeah. So yeah. So we we use the 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 pioneer kind of. Uh, go, Mark, go. <laughs> Ouch. And if you, if you, I don't know if you can zoom in at this point, I think you should can. Yeah, yeah there's like, they actually get bruised in the hair, which <laughs> doesn't make sense, but yeah, when they hit stuff hard. So they were in the fridge area, if you zoom out again. Um, so they get, you know, there's a, there's a thermodynamic model in here, so the, in the fridge people get frozen, and their limbs actually get kind of frozen in place, and they also get brittle. So, what, fortunately, what you're actually trying to do is save uh, uh, an amount of uh, weight of, these guys, not you know, oh. the actual people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as long as they make it to the end, you know, there's like all these things that yeah. So we got 49 Yay. kilos <laughs> of the you know, 1500. <laughs> yeah, we're actually pretty proud of this. Like, yeah, there this you go. Is pretty, pretty big right. achievement. Like, so so, so we, you know, we took though. stuff from from the stuff that happened there. You know, um, if you go down there to the uh, so these are pictures from the different rooms that in the background, uh, just kind of blurred out. I mean, it's it's super quick and dirty. I mean, that's what a jam is, right? We are just the tip of the iceberg here, you know, that you guys see. There's, there's uh, um, I'd say, a handful of people that have been active during the summer, very active. So Chris and Jesus and uh, Matias and, like, these guys are all over the world, and, and we're very fortunate to have them on our team. And we are growing. We are, like, 12 people now. Um, a lot of these people are not full-time. There's only very few of us who are full-time.